Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Rod Johnson. I'm excited about today's program. Uh, we have a, a guest in our studio uh, today from Cannon Falls who recently wrote a book. And I read the book and I was so impressed with it, I figured we have to have him come on this program to talk about the book. It's called uh, Faith Down in Inches. And we have the author with us right here, Truman Tucker. Welcome, Truman. Now you, uh, as I said, you, you're a graduate of Cannon Falls High School and uh, Talk about a little about your school days here and, and what that was like. Because you moved around a little bit before coming to Cannon Falls, but the, then you kind of settled in here, right? I did. Um, graduated from Cannon in 96, so going on 20 years ago, which mm -hmm. seems crazy. But yeah, uh, born in northeast Iowa, um, so maybe about three hours from Cannon. Um, and then just through a series of moves, kind of made our way towards Cannon Falls. We went from a uh, little town of Cresco, Iowa, to Chatfield, and then from Chatfield to Goodhue, and then from Goodhue to Cannon. And then mm -hmm. Cannon Falls is kind of where we finally got some stability yeah. and stayed here from maybe what was it, fifth grade up through yeah. graduating from high school. I remember announcing yep. bomber basketball games and you were playing. Yep. So uh, that, uh, we go back a few years. We do. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But uh, OK, right now, before we get talking about mm -hmm. your book, yep. right now you're, you're living in Rochester. Mm -hmm. What are you up to these days? Uh, I'm living with some friends. Okay. Um, working at a preschool, so being a preschool teacher, mm -hmm. um, and teaching's kind of always been my, yeah, my passion yeah. here. Um, prior to that, I had been a fourth grade teacher over in Wanamingo, um, so yeah. I was trying to kind of slowly get my foot back in the door with the teaching thing, and yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure I'd like the, the preschool age, going from fourth grade down to preschool, yeah, yeah. but oh, yeah, they're, so I'm, they're special, they're they preschool. Are. Yeah, got about they a are. dozen yeah. three-year-olds that I'm in mm -hmm. charge of every day, mm -hmm. so yeah. I used to drive a school van and, and I hauled preschool kids, and uh, yep. what I liked about them, they are so honest. It's oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they come up with some good lines. Absolutely. The, the book you wrote is, mm -hmm. uh, again, called uh, Faith Down in Inches. Is this something you just said, I'm going to write a book, or how did this come about where you actually wrote a book? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of different reasons, I think. Um, and the obvious first one is I just thought I had a good story to tell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all the different things that I had experienced and gone through, um, starting as a little boy till mm -hmm. now, um, that just kind of played it all in my mind. And yeah, I thought, wow, this is something that other people might find interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and then just through the adult life, a lot of the struggles that I had gone through, um, and kind of where that's led me now, um, just kind of hoped that that might serve as an inspiration, yeah. I guess, for some people. Um, a lot of the mental health issues that I've dealt mm -hmm. with. Um, I know there's a stigma that goes along with that. Um, and hopefully that by writing this book, I was hoping that it might encourage some people to be more mm -hmm. open about it, um, to seek help, to see that uh, you know, it's yeah. not all bad. Right. Um, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. So. It was, uh, you know, I, I think you accomplished those goals because I yeah. read the book. I have to say, I read constantly. You know, mm -hmm. I, usually I'm, I'm always reading one book. Sometimes I'm reading two books and it was, and when I heard your book came out, I was uh, right in the middle of reading uh, John Wayne, The Life and the Legend. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to read Truman's book. And I thought, well, is this going to be fair going from John Wayne to Truman? <laughs> but no, it was great. Right. It was great. And uh, your book, uh, brutally honest, you know, mm -hmm. and I give you credit for that. I mean, you, you give a very honest account of your, mm -hmm. your young life because, hey, you haven't hit 40 yet, have you? No. No, see, nope. you're, you're, you're a young man. Yep. You've seen a lot of ups and downs in your life. True. And uh, curious, too, did you have friends that, you know, knew your story to say, wow, you know, you should share this with people? Was that ever part of it? Or I think um, because of all the moving that uh, took place over the course of my life, I've got some friends who knew me at this stage, some friends who knew me at this stage, some friends who know me now as an mm -hmm. adult but d never really knew the, right. the background story. Um, so I think for a lot of people, reading the, the whole life story book was kind of an eye-opener for a lot of people who only knew me at certain times. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I had a lot of encouragement from friends that I have today. Um, Facebook is a big one. Yeah. Um, Facebook has a feature, notes, where you can write more lengthy like journal entries almost. Um, and just through being open and sharing my thoughts and my feelings through that on Facebook, um, a lot of people encouraging me to, you know, you should really sit down and write a yeah. book because this is pretty good stuff. Curious about the title. How did you come up with that? I love the title, Faith Down in Inches. Right. I've always been a sports fan. Yeah. Like you were talking about how yeah. you mm -hmm. were doing some of my basketball games in, when I was a senior in high school. And um, yeah, 
obviously it's got the play on the football, fourth down in inches. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thought about, uh, I always kind of relate life events to sports. And I thought about the, the march down the football field. Mm -hmm. um, goodness, if it's uh, the 98 Minnesota Vikings and Randy Moss and Cunningham, <laughs> things are going great. Yeah. And you're setting records and you're smooth sailing yeah. every time you got the ball. But for most people, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a lot of struggles in life sometimes, and you yes. find yourself getting sacked, and you find yourself with incomplete passes, and getting hit behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And before you know it, you know you're facing fourth down in inches, and you've got to decide how to go from there. And I think that's kind of where I was, yeah. where I was thinking. Yeah. My uh, newfound faith, mm -hmm. I think, played a part in coming up with that title as well. Um, God kind of being the coach. Yeah. Um, so looking to the coach and, for... And, and that's a big part point. of the book, too, is the right. faith. Uh, and, and boy, it, uh, yep. uh, I have to say, I, I really appreciate your writing skills. Man, you're a, you're a very good writer. Uh, oh, I tell you what, you start reading this book, you can't put it down because it's, it's just very easy. Uh, it, you feel like you're right there with you. And uh, it is an interesting, very interesting story. It's... Uh, like I said, it's ups, it's downs, it's mm -hmm. highs, it's lows. Uh, you went to college in Winona, right? I did, Winona mm -hmm. State. And then, uh, you know, we don't want to give away the whole book sure. here, but, uh, sure. uh, you know, after college, mm -hmm. you're married, uh, you uh, have a family, things are going good. You've got a nice house. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> then, at one part of the book right. I, 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 I kind of caught my eye too was uh, you talked about how you'd see homeless people asking for, for money. And sure. how you in your mind thought, you know, why don't you go get a job? And, did, did, right. and you actually took job applications from McDonald's and handed it out to them. This is true. Yes. <laughs> um, but then how later in the book, right. how you went from, you know, living the good life to, wow. Right. All of a sudden you find yourself yep. homeless. And something I never thought of, you pointed out in the book that if you're a homeless person, how do you do a job interview? And I had never thought of that. Right. How do you make yourself presentable to go interview for a job? It's one of those things where there's a lot of small pieces to it that you would never realize yeah. until you find yourself in that situation. Um, you know, in Cannon Falls, not being too far from Rochester, I'm sure a lot of local residents here have driven through Rochester and seen the mm -hmm. hundreds of homeless people that are standing on the street corners and every intersection with their signs mm -hmm. asking for money. and. Yeah, for a long time when things were going great and yeah. I would drive by him and just be annoyed by the situation. And like you said, I, I went so far as to pick up some applications from McDonald's and keep <laughs> them in my, my <laughs> side there. And instead of handing them money, I would hand them an application. And be like, yeah. McDonald's is always hiring for crying out yeah, loud. What's yeah, going on? But yeah. yeah, once you've found yourself living in your car or mm -hmm. sleeping in a parking ramp like I did in Rochester, and like, wow, I don't have a phone for them yeah. to contact me if right. they wanted to give me an interview. and. All my clothes that I have are in the trunk of my car, so how can I present myself to get a job? And yeah, yeah. it was definitely eye-opening. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and like I say, you, the reader, you bring them right with you. And uh, you know, you, you went a lot of highs and lows, you know, and uh, there was kind of a series of events that kind of brought you in a down, downhill spiral, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Um, you want me to go into some of that? If, or? if you want to, you <laughs> sure. know, because... I don't know how much you want to give, uh, to give away, but... Uh, just, yeah. I mean, you had uh, family issues and you had job issues right. and there was just a lot of different things and uh, yep. kind of all hit at once, didn't it? It did. Um, I've often said that even for someone who didn't struggle with mental health issues at all, mm -hmm. um, yeah. they, were, they were quote unquote normal, it still would have been an extremely difficult thing for that person to get through, let alone already right. kind of having some some issues with who you are as a person and the things that I had gone through as a child, then to have all these major losses kind of hit mm -hmm. at almost at one time. Um, I had lost my mother mm -hmm. um, to Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, Sheila Tucker, who yep. lived here in Cannon for- yep, who a lot of people. Yep, a lot knew. of people know yep. her. Mm -hmm. um, so she passed away on December 23rd, uh, 2012. So just a couple of days before Christmas. And the marriage, my wife and I, mm -hmm. we had been together for going on 15 years. Um, it had been rocky mm -hmm. leading to that, and then my mom passed, and then found out that uh, my wife wanted a divorce and that I would need to move out, and that happened less than a month after my mom passed wow. away. Yeah. Um, so I was still grieving that loss, and now mm -hmm. I'm having to move away from the home I had been living in with my four young yeah. kids. And um, Like I had said, I had been a fourth grade teacher in Wanamingo, um, 
which is where I went to Winona State mm -hmm. to become a teacher. And then I had given up on the teaching thing um, and been a stay-at-home dad uh, to our four young kids. Um, my wife worked at Mayo and was pretty successful, so we were able to do that yeah. and function just fine. But over the course of that time of being a, a stay-at-home dad, my teaching license had expired. I wasn't mm -hmm. keeping up to date with that. Um, so then when the separation came and it was time for me to move away from the house, I had no job. I didn't have a teaching license. The house was in her dad's name, so I'm the one having to drive away from the home and yeah. I've got nowhere to go. And just from there, you can kind of see how yeah. things would just <laughs> yeah. escalate quickly. So here I am, I'm uh, taking a little bit of money that I have left to go stay in a motel and try and mm -hmm. figure out a game plan here. Um, yeah, it, uh, it was rough. <laughs> and to come back to where you are now, right. it must have taken uh, friends. I mean, how, how did you, and, and what part did faith play in that where all of a sudden you, you were able to pull yourself back out? Well, from there it went a lot darker before okay. it got better. Okay. Um, a lot of just drinking, a lot mm -hmm. of... Uh, yeah, living in my car. Yeah. Um, there were some nights there last winter. You remember how cold it was last uh, yes. winter? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, and here I am trying to, to stay warm in the parking ramp at the library down in Rochester. And there was a night where I was staying in one of those little ATM entryways because they were heated and the cop kicked me out of there. And so I was kind of getting to the bottom Yeah. Um, and feeling suicidal. That's another part. Mm -hmm. there it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to get that off? Or? That's all right. Oh, okay. That's all right. Um, Good ringtone. It is a good way. ringtone. Yeah. <laughs> Happy. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you can see. <laughs> I'd like uh, what we're talking about right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah, it was, uh, uh, man, it was, uh, I can imagine how tough it was. And, uh, it was, and I had a, you know, a previous suicide attempt, which, mm -hmm. that mental health struggle, which is talked about yeah. quite a bit in the book. Um, and then just going through all this loss and then living where I was living. Um, I think it's pretty easy to see how a person would be feeling pretty hopeless yeah, at that point. Yeah. And I could feel myself getting to that point um, where what's the point? Mm -hmm. Things are not going to get better. Yeah. Um, checked myself into the hospital. Um, you had talked about friends. Yeah. That was something that I've always struggled with. I think a lot of that has to do with all the moving that mm -hmm. took place yeah. as, as a little kid. It was one of those things where by the time I had gotten to my teenage years, I never really developed that ability to maintain or sustain friendships because mm -hmm. I was constantly moving all the time. The people that I had gotten to know, they were gone and now I have a whole new group yeah. of people and then a couple of years later they were gone and now I got a whole new group of people again. Um, so by the time I got into my teenage years and adult life, I didn't really have a whole lot of okay. close friends that I'd had for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's I think where the faith played a big role in it. Yeah. Um, had a couple of friends that, who I'm living with now. Um, they agreed to let me live in their basement, which is where I'm mm -hmm. at now and trying to sort of get the pieces put back together again and um, attending their church almost for a year now. Okay. Um, and just a lot of the strong church relationships. And um, that's another thing. You went from basically no faith. No faith. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it wasn't a matter of going from no faith to where I'm at right. now. It was, it was a matter a of, it was faith to no faith to back okay. to faith again, okay. really. Yeah. Because um, I had grown up in a, in a family where both my parents were very religious, mm -hmm. um, both Christians. My mom uh, went to Riverwood Church here in Cannon Falls every Sunday. Yeah. Um, I know uh, that last year of her life after she was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease till when she passed, that was a very big concern of hers, yeah. was knowing that I didn't believe in God and mm -hmm. how she was going to try to reach out to me and before she passed yeah. away. Um, that funeral service of hers that took place here in town that was people have a hard time understanding when I say that it was an awesome event how can a funeral service be awesome because I was one of those things where I wish I would have had it videotaped so I could go back and watch it again because it was so inspiring it was more of a celebration of her um, than a sad event yeah. and she had had a year to plan her own funeral service and so she sat down with her pastor and had all the passages out of the Bible that she wanted read, had all the songs handpicked that she wanted sung, and at the very end she had a message about wanting to see her family again one day. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that had to have hit home to you. It hit home. Yeah. Um, you know, sitting there in the church, mm -hmm. no one actually turned around and physically looked at me, but I could just feel <laughs> the rest of my family like, mm -hmm. you know truly yeah. this mm -hmm. is directed towards you. Yeah. Um, and I think it was almost a way of honoring my mom or just kind of a feeling of obligation that even if I 
wasn't going to just automatically believe in God the next day, right. that I was going to at least give it another shot. Yeah. Um, and just through that, starting to attend church again, and it just kind of went from there. So. And, and, and another thing I took out of your book that I, it never occurred to me as much, but you talk about some tragedies in life, mm -hmm. and at the time they're tragedies. But then you said, you know, you look at them later, and they're really miracles. They can be. You know, yeah. Right. And I thought, wow, that's, yep. uh, that's really something to, to look at it that way. And, and, right. I, and you're right. Uh, the end result is, you know, like we just seen with you, right. uh, amazing. Well, when you're in the middle of the tragedy, you don't always, right. you can't see the, where it's mm -hmm. going to go from there. You're kind of stuck in the here and now and yeah. things are a mess and it's not until you've gotten through that and you can look back on it and see how God was at play there and help to get you to where you are now. It's uh, yeah. again fantastic book. I, oh, I really enjoyed it, and I would urge everybody to to pick the book up. Right now, it's available uh, on like Kindle, right? Uh, right. Mm -hmm. um, any electronic device, you can download the mm -hmm. Kindle app for free. Um, you go to Amazon, and yeah. you can purchase it through there. I'm hoping to eventually have it in paperback or great, in, yeah. in print. Mm -hmm. So, and we'll uh, you know, you mentioned too that the teaching, and that that's kind of a passion of yours. It seems like mm -hmm. reading your book, how. You were kind of struggling as to what am I going to do in life, and uh, wasn't it? Uh, uh, you coached some uh, junior high basketball, and parents I did. said that, "Hey, you're so great with kids, you should right. go into teaching." And that's kind of how that started, wasn't it? Well, through my own schooling, I hated school, um, <laughs> and a lot of that I think probably was because of all the moves and having a new group of friends every couple of years, and just because of that, never really fit in. Um, and even when I, my family came to Cannon Falls, um, and we were here for a more significant amount of time, mm -hmm. but by then, my personality had already been developed and I had a hard time fitting in because of that. Um, sports mm -hmm. was a big outlet for me. Yeah. It was a way to interact with my classmates. Um, but the idea of being a teacher was something that I'd never considered. I mean, if I hated school, why would I yeah, want to really? work in a school <laughs> as, a, as a career? Um, and I had never really had the opportunity to work with younger people before, and it was, a weird period of time after I had graduated from high school and I had tried college and failed um, and was just kind of lost at the mm -hmm. time. I moved back home and was living here in Cannon Falls with my parents and not really having any kind of a game plan uh, when I had a call from the old high school basketball coach mm -hmm. here in Cannon Falls yeah. saying that they were looking for an eighth grade coach and heard that I was back in town and if I was interested and I didn't have anything going on, so why not? And that was really my first opportunity to work with younger people. Um, and my love for basketball was mm -hmm. a big reason why I considered it. Was I the greatest coach? No. Uh, <laughs> I don't know the game that well, but I think just uh, to see the fun that the kids were having playing for me and showing up every day for practice and to hear the, the parents come up to me towards the end of the season and just tell me how much fun their yeah. son had playing for me that year and had I ever considered working with kids and I laughed it off at first. Yeah. Um, but just kept thinking about it in the back of my mind and the more I thought about it, the more it seemed to make sense, yeah. and, which is what drove me to go back to school to be a teacher. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I think, yeah, you can tell you still enjoy the working with the kids. I do. You? And you Very have much. four beautiful kids. Oh, thanks. You yep. do. I mean, I see some of the pictures on yep. Facebook and uh, yep. uh, boy, they're great. Thanks. You, uh, you're uh, living in Rochester. Mm -hmm. Where are you? I mean, you're, where are you at in your life right now? <laughs> I mean, wow! <laughs> you've 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 come a long ways, mm -hmm. and like we say, you were here, you're down below, back up again. I, I imagine it's a continuing struggle all the time, but you seem oh, to is. be doing very well. It is. Um, I think, and I can't speak for other divorced people. Um, I think 15 years with the same person yeah. is a significant amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, we started dating when I was 21, divorced when I was 36. Um, four kids with her. Yeah. Uh, so that was a very difficult transition. I think for quite a while afterwards, there was a big part of me that just assumed that we'd get back together right. at some point. Yeah. Um, but I think two years removed from that now, I've kind of been able to slowly separate and try to move on with my own life and kind of get my own things back together again. Um, been seeing the same girl for a while now, mm -hmm. working again and with kids, which yeah. I enjoy, have a stable living environment again. Granted, it's with some friends, but it's a, it's a stable place to try to, to put the pieces back together again. Um, so I think you hit the nail on the head. Mm -hmm. Is it still a struggle? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, the mental health thing, still a struggle. It might always be. The rest of my life, it could be. Mm -hmm. um, for the first time, I've been giving therapy a try. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been going to a therapist for 
going on five months now, right. which seems to help. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as those severe lows, uh, I call it the downward spiral yeah. to where you're feeling like suicide is the only mm -hmm. way out. Um, happy to say I haven't been anywhere near that for months now. Sure. And it's been the first time in years that I've been able to say that. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's still a struggle, um, still a journey mm -hmm. as your entire life is, but yes. it's, the, uh, it's a lot better outlook now than it was that's right. a year ago at this time. So. And uh, again, for people that read your book, yeah. and I think you mentioned a little bit about this, but what do you hope they get out of it? I mean, you mentioned a better understanding of mental health issues, a better understanding of, you know, maybe people that are down and out. What, what, do, you, what do you hope they get out of it? Um, that's a good question, too. Ideally, everyone that reads that book would come to know God and just mm -hmm. never have any mental health issues and think, wow, you know what? This guy did it. Yeah. Um, he was to the point where he was ready to yeah. just completely give up on everything. Now, is everybody that reads that book going to take that take away from that? Probably not. But just uh, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. just kind of to serve as a source of inspiration to see that even someone like me who was at that point, yeah. that if you can get through it, if you can mm -hmm. find whether it's, whether it's faith or anything else, um, just find something to live for and stick it out. It's yeah. Yeah, just a matter of time before things start to turn around. I want to I wanna thank you for writing that book because, I mean, okay. you read this book, I can tell, it came from your heart. And right. like I say, you were brutally honest. And uh, Well, I mentioned in the book, too, that I've never considered myself a writer. Yeah. Um, and the people that have read it have come back to me and said, really? Oh. Because yeah. <laughs> cause you write very well. Like I said, I'm waiting for your next book. Right. You're such a great writer. <laughs> and I don't know that there'll ever be one because this book, yeah, right. this book really wrote itself. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not a long book, about 170 yeah. pages or so. But I read it. Or I read it. I wrote it in less than a month. Um, really, just sitting down at the computer for maybe an hour each night, and it just really wrote itself. Because I mean, a lot of it was just mm -hmm. things that I lived and things that I'd been thinking about, and it just was a matter of yeah. putting it down. So, all right. Yeah. Well, again, the uh, book is called Faith Down in Inches. And uh, Truman, thank you for uh, taking a few minutes well, to sure. be with us today. And again. Uh, we hope, I, again, highly, highly, highly recommend that you that you get this book. And the best way, Truman, to get is probably Amazon or something like that. Right. Uh, download it on your, your Kindle or your device. And, uh, yep. hey, who knows? If we, uh, if we get enough people to do that, we'll get it in, a, in print form pretty we'll soon. We'll see it at Barnes & Noble someday. Maybe. There you bet. Be awesome. Yeah, yeah. All right. Good, thanks, again, thank you so much. Truman Tucker has been our guest today, author of Faith Down in Inches. You can find it on Amazon or other outlets and, and get it on your Kindle. And, again, highly recommend this book. It's uh, It's a wonderful book about his life's journey. Uh, thanks for watching this edition of Talk of the Town. Thanks again to Truman. I'm your host, Rod Johnson.